This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And my guest uh, is Greg Nano, the Communications and Events Director of the Catamount Trail Association. Welcome, Greg. How's it going? Good, excellent. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing about uh, you and your organization and uh, some very exciting events coming up uh, in the near future. First of all, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. So um, as you mentioned, my name's Greg. I work for the Catamount Trail Association. I've been here for nine years now. And, you know, my job is to kind of like connect people with the trail, the Catamount Trail, which is a 300 mile long backcountry ski trail here in Vermont. Um, and then create opportunities for people to kind of engage with uh, the Catamount Trail and backcountry skiing here in Vermont. Tell us a little bit about the Catamount Trail Association, how it got started, what it does, and, and some of the uh, uh, things that it's done in the past. Sure, yeah. It's, so the Catamount Trail is a 300 mile long backcountry ski trail uh, that runs from the Massachusetts border to the Canadian border. Um, and it that was established in 1984. And at that time, the Catamount Trail Association was established to kind of uh, promote and protect this trail corridor. Um, and so we've been around for, you know, 30, almost 40 years, going almost 40 years now. And over that time, for a lot of our life, our, the job of the, the association, the CTA, was to kind of work with landowners across the state to kind of make sure to kind of like, you know, keep the trail up to date, keep it open for people to use. And at the same time, like work with um, other agencies to kind of protect these, the corridor so that it would be available for future users um, here in Vermont and abroad. Um, in the last 10 years, we've kind of expanded a little bit. We've created, we've started working with chapters throughout Vermont, like smaller local organizations to manage backcountry ski zones. Uh, these are areas that have been kind of developed for so people can climb up and then ski down or split board down in these areas. And we have a growing number of chapters and zones throughout the state. Um, and more recently, also in the last 10 years, we've really gotten highly involved in kind of uh, youth learn to ski programs. Um, and our youth learn to ski programs, you know, especially in the last three to four years have really kind of exploded. And, you know, we're seeing, we're serving well over a thousand youth every winter now. Tell us a little bit about the configuration. I know it runs from Massachusetts to Canada. Just give us a uh a bird's eye view and we're going to have some photos of it of course but just give us a a, a verbal picture of what what, it, what it's like uh, the terrain the, the obstacles the challenges and things of that nature totally yeah i mean it's you can think of it a little bit we like to think of it as the cooler version of the long trail um just in the sense that it does follow the spine of the green mountains and so you're you tend to be you know either climbing or descending for a lot of the the, the route um, it's on gentler terrain than the, the, you know, the Green Mountain. It doesn't follow the ridge line. We stay a little bit below the ridge, but we, we try and maintain as high of an elevation as possible so we have good snow. Um, you are, there are river crossings and other things. You know, sometimes we do share terrain with uh, snowmobile trails um, where necessary. And other times, and then the, when the trail was originally laid out, you know, we try to connect as many of Vermont's Nordic centers as possible. Um, those places provide like a nice reprieve, a place to grab a hot bite and something to drink. Uh, sometimes, oftentimes there are inns that you can take, a, you can rest and stay overnight at, um, but they, but we're also utilizing their trails, their groom trails as well. So the, the Catamount Trail experience is a real kind of menagerie of, um, of kind of surfaces from like dedicated backcountry ski trail that we maintain and have developed to kind of groom Nordic Center trails and then occasionally uh, groom snowmobile trails as well. That's great. Well, the last time we spoke was well over a year ago, right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, maybe you could tell our viewers what's been going on since uh, January of uh, 2021. Yeah, uh, actually, it's been, it's surprisingly busy. Uh, the, you know, the pandemic has really seems to have helped people rediscover the outdoors. And so it's really pushed people to kind of like, look for new and different ways to kind of engage with the, the, the area around them. And so that's really led to, and also, you know, ski resorts these days are, um, you know, people, who knows, like they're busy right now, like I said, for the same reason, a lot of people are getting outside. And so there are more people at the resorts and, you know, crowds are something that people, you know, 
have dif differing opinions about whether or not they want to engage with places that have crowds. So that has also pushed a lot of people into the backcountry. So over the last, you know, during the pandemic, we've been uh, surprisingly busy. You know, there, there's a lot of interest in the trail. There's a lot of use at all of our zones. Um, we're trying to manage and keep the trails open and the zones skiable. We're also trying to manage parking. Uh, parking as, as use has increased drastically, parking has become a real concern and making sure that, you know, people are informed of and know kind of like what the parking etiquette is and if they, what, to hap what happens if they show up and the parking lot is full and just kind of managing all those, a lot of the stuff that comes with, you know, high, high levels of use. Um, it's, a, there's, there's a lot of the good stuff that comes with that. You know, people are engaged with us and member, our membership is up and uh, our event attendance is up and that's really fun. On the flip side, there's also, you know, the overcrowding and other things that we're trying to manage and working with our partners um, to figure out if what we can do right now and also like long-term thinking more about, you know, we're not, we imagine that this use isn't gonna decline anytime soon. Like once people discover something like backcountry skiing, most people really find that they love it and wanna keep doing it. Uh, so we're looking long term to figure out, look, work with our partners and figuring out ways that we can kind of address use and make sure that these areas are accessible for everybody. And, you know, we don't have to start running into or capping or writing tickets or any of these other things, drastic measures that we really want to avoid. Well, tell us, Greg, a little bit about, you know, the levels of, of skill that, that is needed to navigate. this. Is it, is it for amateurs? Is it for professionals? Is it for uh, novices is it for long time uh, skiers just give us an idea as to what kind of uh, challenges uh, or no challenges that the uh, trail pre presents or provides for sure i mean I'd, I'd like to think i mean there's definitely a little bit of skill needed like i mean you're you're skiing in kind of ungroomed snow or traveling through ungroomed snow and so there's definitely a little bit of skill that is necessary for um you know being out in the backcountry alone, kind of like independently, uh, you need to be prepared for if you have equipment failure, if you're stuck out, of, you know, and you need to know how, like navigational, you know, skills to make sure that you're going in the right direction and can get back to your vehicle if necessary. Um, but generally, we like to think of the Catamount Trail as being kind of available to just about everybody. You know, with the Catamount Trail itself, with 300 miles of terrain, you have to, you can imagine it varies kind of pretty drastically. So, if you're a beginner skier, like you don't have a lot of time on skis or a lot of, um, you know, technical skill on the descents, there are plenty of sections that are, uh, that are flatter and don't require a lot of like a high level of technical skill to kind of navigate. You know, we also work to try and make sure that our, the trails are well marked. Um, we provide navigational resources on our website to make sure that you, you know, users know what they're getting into and have the resources available to them to make sure that they can, if they do get turned around or do get lost, that they have resources available to help them find out, you know, discover like where they are at and how to get back to, you know, a trailhead. Um, and so, you know, it's, again, it, it varies it, and it depends on how you want to engage with the trail. You know, we have a number of people will try and, you know, not a through ski the trail. So they're going to ski from start at one end and ski to the other. Uh, some, if those people are camping, um, you know, that's a, that's a relatively high level of like expertise is required to kind of like do that safely and do that efficiently. Other people are going to go out, you know, we run multi-day tours. We run close to between 60 and 80 uh, day tours throughout the course of the winter. Other people will sign up for one of the day tours on the Catamaran Trail and they'll go out with a, someone to show them, what, you know, help facilitate shuttles and help show them where to go and set the pace and make sure like, you know, provide a, some of that resources and facilitate that experience a little bit more. And the same thing is kind of true about the zones that our chapters manage. I mean, there's backcountry skiing in the sense that you just kind of like look at a map, kind of like you can read that map and like, oh, here it looks like, this looks like a slope that could be skiable. Let's go check it out. You know, to like some of the zones that we have, the zones, there are maps, there's trailheads, there's parking areas, uh, the uphill tracks are marked. So it's a little bit of a facilitated experience compared to kind of like full on backcountry skiing with no resource, no additional, re no resources like that. So it's a kind of a stepping stone. If you think of like how people get into backcountry skiing, oftentimes they'll start uphilling at a resort, you know, they'll go to a, a, a friendly resort that will allow them to skin up and ski down. And then from there, they need to kind of like that next step is oftentimes one of these zones that has additional resources to help people kind of like ensure they have a good experience. 
And at the same time, they can, they can find the goods and get back to their car safely. And then from there, they can jump on to bigger and, you know, adventures further abroad into the kind of more unknown uh, and exploratory backcountry experiences. That's great. And I, I take it you have markers and signage around to, to help people. Or is that what you have? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, on the Catamount Trail, the Catamount Trail is marked with blue blazes. Uh, we have the, the trailheads are marked. You know, if you go to our visitor website, every the trail itself is broken up into 31 sections uh, that are reasonable day skis. And then each of those sections has a map and a written description and shovel directions. Um, we have an interactive map on our website to help people with planning that indicates where all the parking areas are and additional resources like inns and places to eat. Um, and then we have on our website, there's also a staying found page, which has additional navigational resources uh, that will help people while they're actually in the field. Um, and we have paper maps and most of our, and on most of our zones, our chapter managed zones also have the maps as well. Tell us about these chapters. Uh, how many people are involved in that? Where do you have them? Oh yeah, we have, we have chapters all throughout the state. You know, there's the Southern Vermont Trails Org Association down in Southern Vermont and the Dutch Hill Association of Skiers and Hikers. Uh, we have the Nat River Valley Backcountry Coalition, uh, the Northeast Kingdom Backcountry Coalition up north. Uh, there's the Grateful Shreds. And we have, um, I mean, we have quite a few chapters and they manage, um, there's the Ridgeline Outdoor Collective, which is in the Rochester and Randolph areas. Um, they were one of our, they were our first chapter actually, and they kind of, they created the Brandon Gap and Braintree Mountain Forest backcountry zones. Um, those are kind of some of the kind of premier areas here in Vermont, and they kind of like established the template for which these other chapters are working off of. And so every year we're trying to kind of, we're working with the, through the chapters and with our land, our, the land managers to kind of identify new areas that we can, can be developed for this type of endeavor. Uh, so that more and more people will have access to this experience and don't have to necessarily drive two or three or four hours to get to it. That's great. Well, tell us about this uh, event that's coming up, the first ever Cat Gut uh, Charity Ski Store. So tell us sure. what that stands for. I understand it's Catamount uh, Grand Ultimate Tour. That's what it stands for. <laughs> yeah, we just we wanted uh, we wanted something, a name that was short and sweet. Uh, I don't know if people know, but we also run the Northeast Delta Dental uh, race to the top of Vermont in the, uh, that happens in August at, in Stowe. And, you know, after however many years of running that and having to say that whole mouthful, uh, we were just like, hey, we need something short and sweet so that it's easy to communicate with people. So, yeah, we came up with Catamount Grand Ultimate Tour or Cat Gut. Um, it's a little quirky. We think it's a little bit fun. And the, the idea of this, the idea of this event is that it's, it's a non-competitive Nordic skiing event. You know, I think a lot of people look to the Nordic skiing world, especially here, just after the Olympics, they see all the racers and the, the athleticism. Um, but there's so much more, you know, there's so much more to cross country skiing than racing. And we wanted to create an event that was not competitive. Um, it was, that would be a fundraiser for the Catamount Trail Association. Um, and that, and that was kind of open, you know, to everybody to come out and like, have a good time. You know, uh, a lot of people that are kind of like participating in the backcountry skiing or Nordic skiing are probably familiar with kind of gravel cycling. Um, and it's like the, the dirt road riding and that happens in the, and like that sport has really exploded. And there are so many like really fun events that really kind of focus on bringing the community together and having a good time. And again, they're not that competitive. And this is kind of our attempt to kind of bring some of that community togetherness um, and that fun uh, that of just like spending time outdoors with like friends and other people uh, to kind of the Nordic skiing and backcountry skiing worlds. That's great. Now I understand that's scheduled for March 13th, uh, which is uh, pretty near. Tell us what, what yeah. happened on March 13th. Sure. On March 13th, so we're, we're, this event is happening at the Craftsbury Outdoor Center, uh, Northern Vermont. Uh, they are one of the premier Nordic centers in, in Vermont, in the New England. Uh, they've got great conditions, amazing trails. And so what we're going to be doing on the 13th is uh, gathering for, and then there's going to the tour, to go for a kind of a longish tour. You know, we have a short course that's about 11 kilometers long, and we have a long course that's uh, 20, around 28 kilometers long. Um, and so we'll start in the morning and people will go off and we're working with uh, untapped maple, maple out of uh, Richmond there. Uh, they're going to be providing some kind of treats for us at the aid stations. And then REI out of Williston is going to be hosting an aid station for us. 
uh, word has it that they're going to have a fire and a s'mores bar and, you know, some fun stuff while you're coming through. And then Sterling College is going to be help hosting an aid station as well. And they've got a whole slew of activities planned for, you know, hand-free donut eating and hot drinks and tree identification and interactive art. They're going to have, you know, so the, you know, it's a race. It's, we want people to go out and have fun touring around and exploring and seeing the area, but we also want to have people to kind of like engage with each other and kind of like, you know, connect with one another and like have that community, uh, you know, feel like they're part of a community, something larger. It's not just about them getting in the woods, but it's about this like bigger thing that's happening. Now tell us, is there, is there a registration for this or any uh, pre-event uh, uh, necessities that people will need to know about? For sure, yeah. I mean, most people, I mean, you could, people could show up day of and sign up. It's a uh, 50, the registration fee is $50. Um, people can learn more about the event at catgutvt.com. Um, and so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is a fundraiser. So one of the things that, one of the other things that's happening is if you do fundraise, um, when you sign up uh, to, when you register for the event, you, a fundraising page is created for you. And if you raise a hundred dollars or more, you will be entered for every hundred dollars you raise, you'll be entered to win uh, a prize from one of our, you know, we have these awesome prizes from our partners that include, you know, things like we have a package that is a, it's a three night uh, end to end ski package on the Catamount trail that includes lodging and dinner at the trap family lodge, the Edson Hill Manor and Bolton Valley resort. Um, we have a, a hut to hut ski pack, a package on the Catamount trail from the Vermont huts association that includes three nights in huts. We have skis from Fisher skis. We have a $500 uh, gift card to the outdoor gear exchange in Burlington. Uh, VIP tire and service is giving away a free set of tires, like all season or winter tires. Um, we also have, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Uh, the Blueberry Hill Inn has a, an adventure weekend planned that they're, they've donated. Um, Bolton Valley Resort is also giving away a guided, to, a guided tour. Um, so there's a lot, some really great prizes that you could win if you fundraise. So people can sign up, it's 50 bucks, or if they do a little bit of fundraising to get to that hundred dollar mark, uh, they could be entered to win any of these prizes and, and they would be helping out the CTA and our work kind of like managing backcountry ski terrain here in Vermont and are you supporting our youth programs? That's great. Uh, and so people can like have sponsors, sponsor them. Is that what that, that's about? Uh, yeah, the way, I mean, the way it works, it's like a, your typical social fundraiser where you know again when you register you'll have a, a fundraising page will be created for you and then you can just share that page you know on social media or via email with your friends family and colleagues to and then ask them to kind of support you in this effort uh, we will also be keeping fundraising open through the end of the day on the third will come and participate in the event uh, they can also you know they can take pictures of them actually doing the thing that they signed up for and then use that to kind of um, ask for funds for support. <laughs> That's great. Um, now, uh, today is February 21, and we, we've spoken about the uh, March uh, 13th event. Tell us what's going to be happening in, in March and uh, later on with the Catamount uh, Trail Association and its associates. For sure, yeah. I mean, if we have, um, between now and the end of the season, we, have, we still have a bunch of different tours that are happening. Uh, tours like tours on the Catamount Trail, tours at our chapter, at our chapter managed zones, uh, multi-day tours and single day tours. Um, we actually on March 5th, which is next Saturday, um, we actually are coming up. We have the uh, Splitboard, Vermont Splitboard Festival that we're, we host in conjunction with uh, Splitboard Vermont. Um, and that's going to be happening at the Middlebury Snow Bowl. Uh, that's a 100% free event. Uh, people can, anybody that's interested in splitboarding can show up and we have uh, I believe we have 12 or 13 different vendors that are going to be on site. Um, we'll, there'll be split board demos, uh, hold 100% free clinics and other things. So people can just, it's one of those ways we just want to, um, we're working to help connect people with the sport and give them the opportunity to try out some of the equipment, stuff that's like hard to get your hands on. Um, you know, and it's hard to know if you really want to make, you know, pull the trigger on one of these large investments if you don't get to try it. So the split board festival is that for us. Uh, we also run a schemo series at Bolton Valley that happens on Tuesday nights. And so we have three more races left this season for that. Um, and again, every night it's a, it's an, it can, it's as competitive as you want it to be. You can come out and race hard if you want to, or you can come out and just have a fun, 
uh, skiing in the evening with us. Uh, afterwards, we gather and have a raffle uh, with prizes provided by the Outdoor Gear Exchange, uh, Fisher Skis, um, and uh, Dina Fit. So um, there's still quite a bit left going on between now and you know once the snow melts, depending on you know assuming Mother Nature gives us a little bit more snow. That's great. Well, I know for the um, uh, cat gut event, uh, you need volunteers, but tell us what types of things people can volunteer for, uh, for that event and for other activities that you've done. For sure, yeah. I mean, people at the cat cut specifically, we're looking for people to help with registration, uh, aid stations, and to help out at, um, with, our, with the grill team. We have a grill afterwards. We're going to be providing... Uh, uh, food for everybody that finishes so we're looking for a handful of people to help out run the grill so and then otherwise i mean you know we could be if people want to get involved with the cta like right now i think we're pretty set for a lot of volunteer needs but come the spring summer and fall uh you know we don't things don't get shut down here we actually things get a little bit busier if we start to we start stop focusing on more on events and kind of getting people out on the trail and we start looking at we will start working on planning and all the maintenance and other stuff that has to happen between during the warmer months to make sure that winter can happen. So if anybody is interested in getting involved, you know, there's always trail projects that are happening uh, all throughout the state. So no matter where anybody is, there's usually some way, something nearby that they can pitch in with if they want to get out in the woods and kind of get their hands dirty. So if anybody's interested in volunteering and doing trail work, they can always contact us and we can connect them with a local trail chief that can, uh, would be happy to have their support. Do you have any need for any particular expertise in, 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 uh, as volunteers? Are you looking for someone special right now or, or just this is open to anybody? Yeah, it's just kind of open. You know, we have, you know, generally the, the sometimes where we need some, like, rel, some expertise uh, is in uh, with chainsaws. Uh, you know, we don't just let anybody run a chainsaw. So they have to be certified by the state, uh, by the U.S. Forest Service. Um, to run it depending on whose land we're on as well uh, but we prefer to have people that you know have some experience and have those certifications um, but we tend to have a pretty you know we tend to keep our existing kind of trail chiefs we have people that have adopted certain sections of the trail um, we try to make sure those people are have their kind of like are up to date on those things that's great now tell us so uh, one of the things we like to do on positively vermont is is give the organization an opportunity uh, to uh, uh, say, what are your needs? Do you have any particular needs, uh, any issues that are coming up or any uh, financial matters uh, or legislative needs that you have? Uh, what, anything specific uh, or in addition to uh, financial, uh, tell us uh, what you would like the public to, to do with respect to your organization if they're in a position to do so. For sure, I mean, you know, we're a membership based organization so you know our you know all the funds that we receive that kind of like allow us to do what we do come through membership and through charitable contributions so i would encourage anybody to one you know visit our website uh learn a little bit more about the organization and the different opportunities that are out there you know two get out there in the woods and like check it out like go for a ski somewhere or jump on your split board and explore one of our zones and then Three, if you like, if you like had a good time and you thought like you liked what you saw, then come back and like consider becoming a member. You know, you can affiliate with the Catamount Trail Association or as a CTA member, you can affiliate with a chapter uh, by affiliating with a chapter. A portion of your membership dollars goes directly to that chapter to support their efforts. Um, and then, yeah, and then make a, you know, consider making a charitable donation. You know, this spring uh, we'll be launching our trail fundraising campaign. Uh, which is a kind of a charitable, uh, you know, a donor campaign in the spring to kind of support our trail work efforts. And so that'll be happening. That'll be going live sometime in April. Um, and so, you know, right now we're, there's always a 300 miles of trail. You'd think that the, at one point in time, the trees would stop falling, but there's always new ones ready to go. So it's, uh, it takes us all summer to kind of, you know, make sure the trail's clear. Uh, there are bridges that are getting built that, you know, in the winter, like when the, we'll see how the spring goes, but when everything thaws, like bridges get washed out and need to be replaced or, you know, um, picked up and relocated, uh, you know, it takes us, there's a quite a bit of work that happens between, 
you know, April and, you know, November. So that's great. And you have all this material on your website and uh, yes, you can get more yep. information on that. And you have gear. Do you have uh, gear uh, that's uh... we do? Yeah, we, we have a the catamount. We have a small store. You know, you can get catamount trail hats. Uh, we have buffs. Um, and, you know, some of our chapters, uh, some of our chapters also have gear uh, that we sell through our store as well. So if you want to support any of our chapters directly, uh, you can go into the Catamount Trail store and see those products as well. That's great. Well, thanks very much, uh, Greg. And uh, you, Dennis. we look forward to uh, bringing you back uh, on occasion and, and hearing more progress about this, this wonderful activity you have. And uh, just a good luck with uh, everything that's going to be going on. And uh, I want to thank you for appearing on Positively Vermont. My guest today has been Greg Maino, the Communications and Events Director of the Catamount Trail Association. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you all for watching.